Hello and welcome to another Friday reading vlog from me Lauren from Lauren in the Books. I've got period pain which is why my energy levels aren't quite there yet or even soon but the day is dedicated to sort of wallow so I've got a few, few things I need doing. My mum and dad are going out with my niece and they asked me if I wanted to go and I just think I just need to lay down on my side with my knees up thinking, ow. It's extra hard period times at the moment because we haven't got a bath because the bath is full of books. <laughs> I rely quite heavily on the bath when I've got period pain. So no bath for me. Well, I think I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea and then relax in bed for a little bit. I slept terribly last night because of period pain just tossing and turning. Then I'm going to have a nice hot shower. And David's got a hire car that he had to use for work. He's got to return that. So I'm gonna, he's going to return that. I'm going to go and pick him up from there. So we've got to pop to the shop on the way back. But David can go in. I think I'll just go in jammies or something. Why are you whispering that bit? I'm not whispering. You don't know what you want me to do with it. No. That's not what. Then we get to the hard Oh, yeah. I think I'll just read in bed for a bit and hopefully as the day goes on the pain will improve because I want to make soup this afternoon for a nice autumnal lunch hot shower showered and into my outfit of the day which is these Spooky pyjamas, which I actually love because David does a matching pair. Um, we bought them from Morrison's a good few years ago. We've just shut Daphne out because um, David's putting stuff in the car to take back to the storage. Which doesn't like being shut in anywhere. Um, so yeah, so this is it for me for comfy days. Cuffed pair of pyjama bottoms. This, I'm going to go and pick up David for, well, he's going to go to the storage, then I'm going to go and pick him up from the car rental place and he's going to go in the supermarket. It's all going perfectly, but the books... And there are a lot of books today because I think today is basically going to be me sitting on the sofa just having a lovely long read. There's a lot of books to read. So two books. I've, I've got three books on the go at the moment and two of them have got less than 100 pages left. So I think both of those could be done today. The first one is Lark Rise to Candleford by Flora Thompson, which I was reading um, last week. And actually, by the time you're watching this, the reason I was reading this is because they're currently reading this in The Archers, which is a uh, radio soap that uh, takes place on Radio 4. Um, and I do a podcast about The Archers. Um, and we did a special episode where we read and reviewed this. I didn't finish it in time. Um, but you can watch the YouTube video of that video if you would like. Um, of that podcast of me, Philippa and Katie talking about Lark Rise to Candleford. So go on over there. We had a great time recording it. I love reading and talking about books from other people. So there we go. So I've got less than 100 pages of that left. I've also got less than 100 pages of service by uh, Sarah Gill Martin um, left. I have a friend who's married now. So her name isn't Gill Martin, but her name was Claire Gill Martin. And every time I say this, I keep, <laughs> I keep almost saying Claire Gill Martin. Um, yeah, I very much enjoyed this. There's less than 100 pages of this left as well. It's really, if you like the TV show Boiling Point, I think you'd really like this. It's sort of, um, it's set in the, well, it's set in the present day and in the noughties in um, a restaurant in Ireland, in Dublin, in Ireland, where there's, um, uh, somebody has come forward, four women have come forward and said that they were sexually assaulted whilst working at this restaurant. And we're following this from three perspectives. Um, the, of the perspective of one of uh, the waitresses that worked at the restaurant at the time who hasn't come forward yet but has had dealings with the person that they've accused who was the head chef. So we're hearing from his point of view as well. And then we're hearing from the head chef's wife's point of view as well. And yeah, really, really readable. 
great observations and very much enjoying that. Then I'm also reading Jojo Radebe, Johannes Radebe's uh, memoir, Jojo Finally Home. So Johannes is a, um, a dancer on Strictly Come Dancing um, and this is his uh, life up until now. So he, 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 his sort of like background of how he got into dancing is different from like other people that I've heard. He's from a small township in South Africa and um, this is about him finding dance and finding his place in the world. Um, he's an openly gay man, which was unusual, still is unusual in South Africa. Um, so yeah. Daphne, are you trying to do, she's, she's playing with the camera. Like she's, uh, you gonna come over? She's not, she's not coming into videos yet. I mean, maybe I will get her, maybe I'll get a little bit of footage of her today and see what I can do. If Daphne is, by the way, <laughs> for those of you who haven't been around, David and I have got a new cat. We got her a week ago tomorrow. Um, and she's a British Blue, she's a rescue cat. We don't know that much about her, so when we take her to the vets, they're gonna age her. They think she's around too. Um, and yeah, she's settling in really well. She had a couple of days where she was very, very nervous at the top of uh, like, and just hid. But she's really sort of like having a look around and stuff now. Yeah, I mentioned Daphne earlier and some of you must be like, who is Daphne? Um, yeah, so that's that. Then I've also got two audiobooks out on Borrow Box at the moment. One is called The List. I've listened to an hour of it. It's a bit similar in tone, a bit similar really to um, Service. Um, I haven't used Borrow. Normally I use Libby, but I've been using Borrow Box as well. Um, it's called the, the List by Yomi Adagoke, um, and you're following a couple who are due to get married, and um, they both work in sort of media jobs. And one day on Twitter, a list um, is released of um, everyone who works in the sort of like entertainment and media industry who have been accused of sexual assault. And the man in the couple, um, who his name is on that list, um, I haven't found out any more about it apart from it just says um, sexual assault at a Christmas party, I think it said. So we're following. Um, the woman um, and the man and their separate things. So yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see where that goes. I've also got out the audiobook plus the library book of Normal Rules Don't Apply by Kate Atkinson. Um, Kate Atkinson is a, a sort of go-to author of mine. If she brings a book out, I'm like, yeah, I'm reading that. Um, and this is short stories. Um, I love this front cover, by the way. Um, so I would like to get around to that. And I don't know if I'm going to read it and listen to the... Um, the audiobook of it as well and I don't know how borrow box works in terms of renewals so I need to sort of get to it oh this has got I love it when this happens when you get a book and it's got a um a ribbon bookmark in it so yeah so that's five books however there's also more because I was thinking I really need to get to my reading challenges and today might be the day that I start horror store dependent on how I get on so that's quite a lot but like I said today's Um, today's day is reading. I've got a Tesco shop coming at um, between two and three, and I wanted to make soup, um, but I could listen to an audiobook while I'm doing that, and whether or not I actually feel up to making soup, who knows. But here we go. So that is, that's the reading for the day. Let's see how much we get on with that. I mean, it'll be nice if I finish the two books that I've got less than 100 pages of. Um, we will end the video, as we always do, with a poem. Um, the uh, seasonal poems still aren't quite here yet. They're still, well, they're not here, they're tucked away in the bath. So we're gonna be reading from this book, which is a poem to read aloud every day of the year and edited by Liz Ison. So heavy every time I read it, I can't believe it. The question <coughs> we will be answering today is, we're really getting to the, to the end of these questions. Oh. Still haven't learned how to um, shuffle them though, have I? Where the wild things are. Do you have a favorite picture book? What do you love most about it? Have I got any of my favorite picture books here? Yeah, I think I have. A lot of my picture books have now been rehomed in my niece's little section. Um, so yeah, so that's because I was thinking, I'm not gonna be able to show you that because all the books are away, but I think a lot of them are there, so I'll be able to show you those. So yes, oh, looking forward to your answers on that as well. So if you haven't been here before, we, um, we ask a question at the top of it, each one of these videos, and um, then we all answer it together in the comments, and I answer at the end of the video. Do you have a favorite picture book? What do you love most about it? <laughs> Let me show you, Daphne. Hey, Daphne, what are you doing up there in that little hole? Oh, pretty girl. 
Is that your hole now? I was thinking about making one of these holes. So these two boxes have currently got, this is my, so these two boxes have currently got um, uh, board games in. This is my niece's little hole that needs to tidy up. Um, this is uh, puzzles. And then these two at above are, so there's records up there. That one was supposed to have like, the one. The, so the Lego is normally in this one, but I moved it because Daphne was trying to get in there. So yeah, I need to have a sort out of this whole unit. Oh, David's gonna be very excited to see you in there. There we go. And then the last thing I guess is the ultimate reading challenge. And like I said, if I wanna get these done by the end of the year, I've really got to up it. Um, I think the one that I'm gonna be able to do today, there's two that I could be able to do today. So um, read, a genre, read a book in a genre you've never read before. If I manage to start Horror Store, then I'm onto that. Um, and the other one is, There's one about attending a, um, um, going to a book event, but I was thinking if I could watch one online. Attend an author event in person or virtually. So if I can find an author event online, then I can sit and watch that. That might be quite a nice thing to do. Yeah, one of these will be done by, by the end of the day. I would have completed, well not completed, but at least started um, the, the horror book if I, if needs be. Okay, cool. Right, well, I've got to go and put the washing out. And then I'm going to crack straight back on with more reading, trying to finish it. My dad's outside. i to go and say hello to him. I thought he was going to Leeds Castle today. Obviously not. I do absolutely love the sound of the washing machine being on. And the dishwasher. The dishwasher's not on at the moment, but I just love those background sounds so much. <sighs> just back from picking David up and I listened to all but five minutes of the first short story in Normal Rules Don't Apply. I very much enjoyed it and I'm gagging to find out how it ends. It's called The Void and it's about, it's a bit Marvel actually. <laughs> David would probably have liked it. <coughs> Whereby there's this sort of black moment that's happened where everyone sort of thinks that they can't well, it just goes all dark everywhere. Um, and then when the light comes back, a lot of people have died. Um, yeah, mad. Anyway, I'm gonna carry on this thing. Well, I'm gonna, it's not that much long at all, but very interesting. Than anything previously experienced on the planet, a half a million Krakatoas, a hundred thousand Hiroshima, the end of civilization as we know it. The greatest disaster. What I should say is that it's narrated by Patterson Joseph, which is an extra bonus. That's Johnson from um, Peep Show. The Tesco shops arrived, <coughs> and not a moment too soon because I'm absolutely gagging to make my dinner. Which is oh, oh yes, sir. it is. It's going to be the butternut squash square um, frozen bits. Uh, my lunch, sorry, which is uh, roast pumpkin and Bramley apple soup. Oh my god, it apparently takes an hour. <laughs> We're going to be having lunch till 10 to 4 at this rate. The soup takes an hour, David. <laughs> um, I will still make it. And I will still have a small bowl of it. Um, I remember I showed you guys what we got on the shop. Was it last month? Was it the month before? Um, and you all quite enjoyed it. I like seeing what people buy on their shops as well, particularly if you live in another country to me. So I thought I would show you. This is 76 pounds worth of shopping. Um, we also get gusto throughout the month and this is just like stuff. So like I do a, like, a top up on my cans every month um, and freezer bits. Um, and bigger items that I wouldn't, that would, I don't like going to the supermarket because I spend more when I go to the supermarket because I'm browsing and I think, oh yeah, I'll have that when I wouldn't normally have that. So yeah, I'll start with the freezer stuff because I need to get it away. Um, I've got some butternut squash chunks. I had to get these because they didn't have butternut squash um, for me to make this soup out of. So that's what one bag is. The other bag, I all, uh, I've started getting a bag of these because um, these are really easy to just sort of cook from frozen and take sort of 25 minutes in the oven um, and then I can add them to um, curries and stuff. So 
They're very good, very helpful. I've been using those a lot. Um, and then I also got this Mediterranean style roasting vegetables because I thought this would be good to have with pasta and stuff like that. Or again, I can put it in a curry. Courgettes, peppers and cherry tomatoes, aubergines and grilled red onions. Like ratatouille base, basically. Ratatouille. Um, and then I've got this, which is new to me. This is a kilogram of perfectly imperfect mixed berries. Um, I normally get blueberry, frozen blueberries and just have like a little small handful of those in yogurt for breakfast. Um, but this was much cheaper. It has got red currants in, which I'm not mad on. Strawberries, red currants, blackberries, and black currants. If I don't like it, I won't get it again. But it was the same price of I think like a 500 gram. So like same price for double the amount. But if I don't like it, then there's no point in getting it. Right, let's move on to. Oh, this is the only replacement I've had. All of these bags, by the way, um, we use again. So they are not single use. We always click the um, no. Um, plastic but you still get sent from plastic this was my only replacement instead of being sent a big bag of coriander they obviously didn't have any so they sent me a plant of coriander which i don't really like because coriander plants i can't make last very long you don't get as much from them i'd much rather have the bags worth but i'm going to pop it in there for a little bit of watering from what i understand is that coriander plants need a lot of drainage and you can't really offer that i've got a so i've sort of maybe forgotten a bit what i'm cooking this week so tonight for dinner we're having um sesame crackling pulled mushroom buns um which is a recipe from this cookbook that david got for his birthday oh mob six david's sister got him that for his birthday so the recipe we're having is out of there. It's got a big stain on it already. Tomorrow night, David's out and I'm gonna have <coughs> Marmite pasta, which is my favorite, um, with tender stem broccoli, which I roast and put in it. Sunday, we're now going to, oh, okay. So this was, I'm gonna do, I was gonna do a leek and mushroom pie um, with mash and Maybe baked beans, maybe gravy. Um, but we're now going to David's parents for pizza. So that will happen at some point in the week. So I'm going to pop that in there. Um, Monday we're having What the Cluck. This was gonna be our Saturday night dinner and then David is going out. So we wouldn't normally, I don't eat all that much fake meat just cause I'm trying to keep the cholesterol down cause my cholesterol was so high. Um, and these sort of things have got like secret bad stuff in them, saturated. Well, this actually isn't that bad. Um, but yeah, we don't have as much cause it's processed, isn't it? So we're having what the cluck, which is fake chicken and pineapple um, tacos for dinner on Monday got two cans of pineapple because I also make quite often sweet and sour tofu because I buy a box of tofu and that's sort of like my go-to food uh, my go-to dinner if I don't know what to make tofu this tofu lasts until the 22nd of October so it's got quite a long life on it and I sort of know how to make that sweet and sour tofu recipe like the back of one's hand so yeah, so we'll have that at some point during the week. Uh, during the, uh, yeah, and that's what we're gonna have on Tuesday. But I've also got enough stuff um, so that we can have paneer um, or falafel. Oh, where's paneer? Oh, right, paneer or falafel curry. We went to a food festival recently and I bought back 10 of these different things. We're down to three. Um, this is a, a vegan curry paste. Um, and I like adding things like paneer that lasts until next February, so that will last in, a, in there for ages. This will have less of a date on it. Oh, tenth. So we've got. To have, so we'll have a falafel tikka masala at some point, and then maybe throw in like a handful of frozen veg or something like that. Um, and then I also got stuff to make a three bean chili, which is what all of these beans are for. Oh, I've also got a tikka masala in here as well. Um, that's what all of these beans are for. So two cans of butter beans, two pan cans of cannellini beans, 
two cans of chickpeas. I also got four cans of baked beans, because David loves a baked bean. And I got a can of coconut milk to pop in my old curries as well. Um, oh, I'll tell you what I didn't get though. Black beans, which is what I will need, so I'll get those at some point. Um, and then I've also got stuff to make broccoli and blue cheese quiche, which is from the Green Roasting Tin. It's one of my favorite recipes to make. It's very sort of like opulent and nice. Um, and that's good because it makes four portions, so we can have it for dinner, and then we've got a portion for lunch the next day as well. So that's why I've got, oh, so I've got two lots of pastry because I had a lot of pastry for the leek and mushroom pie that we're now not having. How when these always sneak up on me. Oh, 24th of October, not too bad. And then a puff pastry, 23rd of October. So that's for the quiche, so. So we go, so yeah, lots of dinners here. Uh, and then here's the broccoli and the blue cheese to go into those. So that's for dinners. Um, oh, and I also got, oh, there's the red pepper for sweet and sour tofu. I'm actually very excited about the old sweet and sour tofu. Go there. And then two onions, I think one was going to go in the pie and then one, because onions have quite a long shelf life on them, don't they? Stay in there. So yeah, all of these, they're not idea one like I said we do opt not to have the plastic but we will use those at some point oh and then there's potatoes here um, which I'll pop in the fridge I think just to keep a little dark um, they were for mash um, but I can use them for other stuff as well right okay then the rest oh here's the top for some reason I don't know why I've done this this has surprised me actually I've bought a taco kit which I never normally do. So unless I just thought I was buying tacos and it's ended up being a taco kit, because you get the tacos in there. These are the ones I do prefer. They're more expensive, but they're softer and you can hold them up. David's not a big fan of the crisp ones, which I am. Um, and then you also get a seasoning mix and mix and a salsa. So I will use those bits, but I wouldn't ordinarily have bought that. Um, I obviously didn't know what on earth I was doing. Um, oh, more onions. And then the rest is just sort of top up and snacks and bits, I think. Yeah, it is. So uh, we were running out of greaseproof paper, so I've got one of those. Um, we get through quite a lot of kitchen roll. We've still got, I use kitchen roll a lot in cleaning um, to wipe down stuff to get rid of dust and things before I then do it. That can go in the pantry because we've still got one on the go. Oh, time was for the pie as well, so that will be had at some point. Um, oh, this is for my soup, roast pumpkin and bramley apple. They didn't have bramley apples, but I looked and they said the closest thing to a bramley apple is a granny sniff. Bought this for cleaning, bicarb, do loads of cleaning with my bicarb. That's my new, my new thing. Got a chipotle paste, what's that for? I don't know, maybe to go in tacos yeah maybe the tacos um but these last a long time in the fridge anyway that was something yogurt like i said i have yogurt um most mornings with a handful of fruit for breakfast and then i've got two creams i think one of these is for a pie and one of these is I can't remember. what else could it be for oh i think the i think the quiche Got myself some radishes as a snack, because I love myself a radish. Oh, I haven't got any salad stuff. That's going to upset David. Hmm. These are the brioche buns that we're having for the... Um, Mushrooms tonight, loaf of wholemeal bread. I don't eat all that much bread, David does. Tomatoes, again, for snacking. I love me a tomato for snacking. David gets a solitary can of tuna a month. I'm vegetarian. David eats vegetarian at home. 
the only thing I tend to buy that isn't vegetarian the whole month is a can of tuna and David will have that over two days for sandwiches. Bramley apple sauce. Can't be sure what that's for. Is it for my soup? Nope. <laughs> it's for something. I don't know what. I'll discover. Uh, we ran out of tea. I bought this because it was on Tesco club card offer because this is expensive this tea it's six pound for a hundred and sixty tea bags for six pounds but it was actually an offer for four pounds so I was like okay I'll get that but the offer expired by the time that the it got delivered today so I've just paid six pound for all this tea but it is the sort of closest I can get to my favorite tea which is Barry's tea so I wouldn't ordinarily have spent that much on tea but here we are we live and we learn got myself a big bottle of vegetable oil if you buy more it costs less and they use less plastic because it's a bottle so yeah so we use this for cooking and things like that we don't use this whole bottle we decant it into one of these and with it that will go in the pantry as well then some sugar because we're running out of sugar and I need to, sometimes I add it to a little bit of sauce or something like that some whole wheat noodles and some seeds oh good so as I mentioned earlier because of the old rising cholesterol I've been trying to do a few little bits to bring down the cholesterol I don't know if any of it's working yet because um I, don't know, my, I think my cholesterol was checked in August and I won't have it checked again but adding seeds to almost everything so like I've got pumpkin and uh, sunflower seeds here so I add like a little pinch of that to if I'm having scrambled egg do that yogurt do that um, tops of curries on salads and things like that so normally I've been buying a bag of sesame seeds and a bag of pumpkin seeds but I saw that they've got this toasted three seed mix which has got sesame seeds, pumpkin seeds, and linseeds, and they're all toasted, so that might make things a bit, not that it's not nice already, but just like a bit different. So they go in my seed box. There we go, and that's the shopping. And now I better get that soup on, otherwise I'll be starving forever. I'm gonna put my audio book on and do my soup. so bad I'm retreating to bed with this hot water bottle. It's also quite warm today. Oh David's here. It's also quite warm today. So it's not the best place to be I've taken ibuprofen as well. Oh dear. <clears throat> anyway, I'm gonna read a little bit more. What are you doing in bed at quarter past five? Cheeky. You tired? Yeah. Oh. 
I've got just a little biscuit each. Hey, you, you cracked over my new biscuits. Yeah, I've just got such a headache. Wow. Let's read a little bit more. This reading vlog's certainly full of energy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to turn that off, it's about to run out because of that. Oh, you're making me do everything. I know, but I've got period pain. Oh my God, I'm feeling so much better. I've just turned the spa music off. Relaxing massage, that playlist is called. Um, I think because David's just given me a relaxing massage, I just sometimes, when my period hurts so much, I just feel I need to be touched somewhere that isn't painful. Um, so he just gave me a little 10 minute massage. I only get 10 minutes out of him because then he starts going, my hands up. <laughs> I thought he was gonna say. And then he starts saying, oh, my hands up. Hey. <laughs> I thought you had your headphones in. Um, but yeah, we had my favorite candle burning, which is a candle um, we got when we went on our mini moon last year. It's by Bramley, which is a, co uh, a company that I really like. Um, but when we went on our mini moon last year, we went to somewhere called The Pig um, and they've done a collaboration, The Pig and Bramley. And um, we had one of those candles burning in our room. So I purchased it um, and it's just burning there, just smelling lovely. I've had it before for my birthday. I think Laura bought it for my birthday before. So yeah, anyway, the time now, it's 20 to six. Um, and I think I'm gonna read for a little bit. I'm gonna read until six. I really, really wanted to get one of these books finished today. To be fair, I've been flipping, because my concentration hasn't been great, I've been flipping between the three of them. And whilst, so the stats are, this has been fine, but I can't wait for it to be over. <laughs> like right to Candleford. And I'm on page 621 of 679. So just over 50 pages of that left. This is very, very good, but very hard hitting. There's um, uh, trigger warnings for sexual assault and things like that, particularly the chapter I've just read. So that uh, I've been keen for the breaks from that as well, but very much think it's a great book. And this has just been lovely and very easy to read. I always find that like celebrity memoirs, I really enjoy reading. Um, and I get through them really quickly. So that's what I've just spent just before David gave me the old massage. I just did that for, um, I just read a chapter of that. So I'm gonna carry on. Whilst I'm feeling a bit better, maybe I'll go for a chapter of Light Rise to Candleford. Um, and then we need to make plans for the evening, really. God, I am so desperate for a bath. I cannot wait for bath time. I just cannot. Daphne's over there just doing a little clean. She's very cute. Um, and I've got my TENS machine on now as well, which I think is, oh, underneath my knickers, which I think is helping a bit. So yeah. Yesterday, I go through real weird phases with my period, that like, sometimes, the, the, it, well, it always used to be that the first day was agony, like from when my period arrived, I'd have a little bit of a warning that it was coming, a bit of griping, and then from the, like, the first 24 hours from literally when it arrived to for 24 hours would be awful. And I don't, I don't know if this is a pattern yet, but for the last sort of three periods, it's been that the period arrives and I think, oh, actually, I can do this. So like, it will hurt, but it's normally I can keep it at bay with a hot water bottle or something. And then the second day is the real zapper of energy and just makes me feel awful. And that's what today's been. So it's been lucky that it's fallen on a Friday. On a day. And that's another thing I keep, I always hope that it will happen on a day when I'm not at work so that I can just look after myself. So yeah, so I've just done very low energy things. It's nice to have that soup. I took some ibuprofen then. That's, I, haven't, I hadn't taken any tablets until then, but I had to because it was so bad. But let's go to a chapter of this now. And the chapter is entitled Tarara Boomdia. After she had become accustomed to her new surroundings at Candleford Green, Laura was happier, or at least gayer, than she had been since early childhood. Good morning. Me and Daphne are playing with the glitter ball. <laughs> I opened the curtains this morning and the glitter ball's making it all lovely in here and glittery. 
I didn't continue with the vlog yesterday because my period pain got really bad, but I've woke up this morning, it's still bad. It's too, bad enough for me, she's loving it. It's bad enough for me not to go to my weightlifting class this morning. <clears throat> I was thinking about going and just doing the very little I can, but it's quite challenging and I didn't want to go and make myself feel worse or so. I stayed in bed and now we're just up playing with the glitter ball. Well, here she comes. Is she coming? No. She's, um, when we first got her, she was quite into being stroked and stuff like that. I mean, it's only been, it's literally been a week today. And I feel like she's gone backwards a little bit. She was sort of, would jump up and put her paws on me when I was on, in bed and stuff like that. And she hasn't done that for a few days. Um, and just sort of wants to be, like she'll sleep on the chair and stuff like that, but I, I don't want her to feel like she can't come for a cuddle if she wants one. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's still very, very early days, isn't it? I'm having a few toileting issues as well. She's pooed on the floor near her litter tray many, many times. She went through a period of not doing it, as in pooing in the tray. She poos more than any cat I've ever known. Minnie used to poo every other day. Daphne poos about three or four times a day. <laughs> I don't know if a lot of it, it has slowed down a bit. I don't know if a lot of it was nerves. But um, I don't know how we're going to get her to poo in the tray. Oh, she's found a spider. She keeps eating spiders as well. Um, so yeah, so the reading vlog will continue into today. And I'm going around my friends tonight to watch. I should come dancing. David's going out tonight. But yeah. Nice, isn't it, all of these little sparkly bits? She's after that spider. She's following the spider. Oh, she's going all the way in. All the way in. How are you going to get out of there? Oh, that way. Hello? Did you get the spider? Oh, that would make me think you did. Bye. So we do some chores together, Daphne. Saturday morning chore time. First things first. Put the dry washing away. Quite a lot of uh, tidying. The bedroom's looking lovely. I mean, how lovely can this lounge look? I can't wait till the carpets are done and then we can put things on shelves and stuff. It just feels very hollow at the moment. I've got to dash David to the train station in a minute, but I'm just waiting for him to finish in the shower. Then I'm gonna get in the shower, wash my hair, take him to the train station. Then I'll come back, get ready for the day. And yeah do the day edit this video i'm still absolutely determined to finish one of these books and then i will start horror store even if i don't finish one of these books i will start horror store by the end of this video because it needs to be done but we are on the third to last chapter of Lark rise to candleford the girls laura saw most of that time were tradesmen daughters living at home employed only in keeping their father's business books or helping their mother with the lighter housework like that is worth it. I've taken David to the train station. I've done a bit more cleaning. I've washed my hair. Um, I'm waiting for it to air dry for optimum volume for the 70s hairdo I've got planned. I'm just going to have a little read and eat the rest of yesterday's soup. This soup said it fed four people and I've had two portions. Yesterday's portion was tiny. Today's portion is more of a normal portion. I can't believe that was supposed to feed four people. Anyway. Delicious, anyway. Back to service. Hello. <coughs> I need to start getting ready 
to go to my friend's house tonight. It's a lot of effort going into this because <laughs> I'm going around my friend's house just to watch Strictly, but today's prompt on Outfits October, if you've been following Outfits October, is 70s. And I agonised for ages how to do my 70s hair. But what I really want to do is just do a lovely big disco head of tight curls, which is what I'm going to do. But it takes ages. <laughs> I mean, as you can see, the, the wand is hot and it goes, it, they go into curls quickly. But I've got a lot of hair to curl. So I thought what I'd do is just pop on the old 70s dance tunes and just go for it. And then let's see what the finished article is. I've done it before, not for many, many years. But yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. And I think it's going to take about an hour and a half. So we'll see. It's currently 15.07. So I'm going to put Dancing Queen back on and continue to curl. Dancing Queen! So this has taken me 40 minutes. <laughs> I'm not even sure if the back's done because I've got nobody here to tell me that. <laughs> We're gonna brush these out in a minute but I'm just leaving them a little time to set. I think actually I've heard maybe if you do like a cold set, if you do like cold air on this now, maybe that sets it. So should we do that? That will cool me down a bit as well. Oh God, I didn't that one. Okay, let's do cold air. Oh, now I guess we just brush these bad boys out and then I'll touch up anything that needs doing. I'm done. Now, my hair is a bit Kevin Keegan compared to potentially the Barbra Streisand look I was going for, but I don't hate it. And I've had to wear this shirt because the other shirt didn't do up. So second wearing for this. But I've tried to 70s it up as much as I can. I've got these sort of like bell bottom trousers on with some boots, big belt, this little tie. I think that would count as 70s. The only thing is, is that the whole look is transformed when I put my glasses on. <laughs> and I look like, um, I don't know, it's, it's quite 80s when I put the glasses on. So yeah, I'm pleased with it. I've got to go to my mum and dad to get a photo taken before I go to Emma's house. But um, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Daphne, what are you? She's right, just the, uh, the tripod for some reason. Morning, happy Sunday morning. This is one of those Friday reading vlogs that's extended and extended. I'm just making the most of these beautiful white waffle sheets because I'm going to change them today for a more autumnal fair. Um, I am in bed, a Sunday morning. David's watching Strictly because I saw it last night. Then we're going to record the podcast but I thought I'd wrap up the vlog now but you know what I kept saying so I still haven't got I still haven't finished any three of these books I've also listened to two short stories from normal rules don't apply which I'm, I'm very much enjoying particularly the audio of it because it's narrated by Pat and Joseph but I did say that I would start horror store didn't I so here I am I'm going to read is it the first chapter of Horror Store? Yes, I'm going to read the first chapter of Horror Store and then I will come back and I will wrap up the question, which is, do you have a favourite picture book? What do you love most about it? I will read a poem and I will do my reading challenge. So let's go into Horror Store. A bit nervous, horror books. Let orcs help you be yourself the orcs way oh, this is about using the store oh dear very very scary let's have a look so the first chapter is called brooker and it's about it's about a sofa a sofa that's everything you dreamed a sofa could be with memory foam cushions and a high back that develops the support your neck deserves brooker is the relaxing beginning to the end of your well there we go i've read the first chapter it wasn't that scary <laughs> it was fine it was more sort of like setting up the scene of this store um orcs which is like ikea and um we're learning about amy and her manager basil and things like that but yeah i'm looking forward to getting more into it so there we go 
Oh, I need to get my picture books, don't I, to show you my picture books. Um, lots of reading, There's lots of different books, but no finished books, which is unbelievable. Um, but yeah, let me go and get my picture books and then I'll answer the question. Do you have a favourite picture book? What do you love most about it? Two seconds. Okay, so here we go. Now, the first one is a book that I had when I was a child. Um, and I, it's probably in my mum and dad's loft somewhere, but I loved it so much. I found a secondhand copy online and I bought it. It's out of publication now, but it's called Puzzle Island. Um, and it's devised, written and illustrated by Paul Adshead. Um, and it looks like this. And it's a, a, an adventure story. If I just open up at any page. And you follow the adventure on these pages and then you have these big pictures. And around the edge of these pictures, um, they've got the alphabet. And the alphabet has um, some missing letters. And those missing letters are an anagram of an animal which is hidden in this picture. Now, you can't move on until you've found all the animals. And yeah, there's just lots going on in here. And I used to love puzzle books when I was younger. I always used to get a, um, a Crystal Maze puzzle book when I used to go on holiday and I used to get lots and lots of puzzle books out of the library. But I remember my mum and dad getting me this. Um, and I also remember my mum and dad um, sitting up and doing this past like me going to bed and stuff like that. I just think it's great. If, if anyone knows of any of these other book, books like this, please do let me know because I had such a great time with it. So for example, like if you look in this picture here, you can see that in this, there is a lion's head. Can you see the lion's head in the lava? So it's sort of like hidden, not hidden animals in the way. I'm trying to find another one. Um, oh, there's a seal here. This might be a bit more difficult to see on camera, but there's a seal, like the outline of a seal. Can you see it, David? I can see it, so um, I like the lion. Yeah, and I used to just, oh, there's a swan here. You see the swan's head going up here past the kangaroo's ears and stuff like that. So, yeah, I used to have a lot. Oh, I want to find the last one now. Oh, it's a shark. Oh, no, it's a tuna, I think. And it's it made from the, the branches of these trees. So there we go. So I've done that page for you. But there's loads of that in there. And that, I used to love that when I was younger. And I was so happy when I managed to get my, my hands on a second oh, on a on a second hand copy but yeah it gets harder as it goes on and then there's like these big puzzles at the end and things like that so if anyone knows anything different else like this would love to do it and then more recently i have just been so like in just so transfixed and it's really caught my eye and just like i've really had a lovely time getting to know these books um, and buying these for literally every child I know. And that's the Franklin Flying Bookshop um, series, which is written by Jane Campbell, who is a friend of mine, and illustrated by Katie Harnett. There's three of them, so this is the first one. Franklin's Flying Bookshop. Then we've got Franklin and Luna Go to the Moon. And then we've got Franklin and Luna in the Book of Fairy Tales. And they're just such beautiful, beautifully illustrated, but I think the favourite part, so a, a part of this question was, what, should, what do you love most about it? Well, what I love most about these books are the words. Like, I love the way, like, the words just flow so beautifully. So when you're reading them, they just sound so nice. So here we go. Every day, Franklin reads about King Arthur and roller skating, about electricity and baking. He reads about spiders and ballet and how to do kung fu. When the sun goes down, Franklin reads by the light of a thousand fireflies, because fireflies like to hear stories too. But if it's a warm night, he spreads his wings and flies into the sky to read by the light of the moon. Um, and yeah, they're just lovely, lovely things. Um, and each of them like sort of themed it. So this is like navy with copper, blue with gold, and then red and silver. And yeah, they're just lovely. And I love reading them aloud to my niece. And like I said, I've just bought them for every, every child I know. So those are my favorite picture books. We'd love to hear your favorite picture books. Um, then let's read a poem. Oh, we're, we're into Sunday now, so what is it? What's the date today? 8th of October. Let's see. So far, all of these poems that I've read out of this book, I haven't, there hasn't been one that I've loved. So we're, we, ne we need one that we love. So this is called Tears, Idle Tears, and it's from The Princess, and it's by Lord Tennyson, um, who lived between 1809 and 1892. Tears, idle tears, I know not what they mean. Tears from the depths of some divine despair rise in the heart and gather to the eyes in looking on the happy autumn fields and thinking of the days that are no more. Fresh as the first beam glittering on a sail that brings our friends up from the underworld. 
sad as the last which reddens over one that sinks with how we all love below the verge. So sad, so fresh, the days that are no more. Ah, sad and strange as in dark summer dawns, the earliest pipe of half-awakened birds. To dying ears when on to dying eyes, the casement slow, slowly grows a glimmering square. So sad, so strange, the days are no more. Dear as remembered kisses after death, as sweet as those by hopeless fancy feigned. On lips for that, that are for others, deep as love, deep as first love and wild with all regret. Oh, death in life, the days that are no more. I'm still, I've read, I think I've, that's the third one I've read out of it and haven't loved. I think it's maybe because they're all sort of like older poetry and maybe I'm into more modern stuff. But we'll see. Until we've got the other books out the bar, we continue with this. And then finally, I get to finally go for, read a book in a genre you've never read before. Horror isn't a genre I've never read before, but they're very little genres I haven't read before. So we've gone for one that, a genre that I've read little of before. So here we go. What's my little, oh, it's really deep in there. Oh, oh my God, this is so cute. This is so cute. It's a little paper clip. Oh my God, it's literally out of my heart how cute it is. It's a little paper clip. And then look, it's got like a cup of tea with a little tea bag hanging out of it. How adorable is that? That is just so adorable. <laughs> Can't get over it. So there we go. Thank you so much for joining me um, for another Friday reading vlog. Friday through to Sunday reading vlog. And I'll see you all again soon for another witchy video. Goodbye.